I'm Alexandra Titova, a third year PhD student of French Alternative Energy and Atomic Energy Commission in Ines Paris Eclair Institution. And my presentation is dedicated to in-situ XCT test on mortar microspecimen coupled with mesoscale numerical simulations of fracture. First, I would like to start with some global context of the study. So the industrial context comes from the nuclear industry. On the figure, you can see a double wall concrete containment building. This structure aims to confine the radioactive substances inside the nuclear reactors, and its leak tightness is provided by the pre-stressed concrete of the internal wall. But during the exploitation, the delayed strains due to shrinkage and creep of concrete will cause the, re the decrease of the pre-stress value, which will increase the risk of the fr concrete fractures, concrete cracks, and the leaks. For, for the correct prediction of the service life of the structures, we need to be able to predict correctly the delayed strains. The aim of my PhD is to develop a numerical model for creep damage coupling at the mesoscale. But so for that, first of all, I need to identify the damage model at the mesoscopic scale. So for that, we have designed a coupled experimental numer numerical approach that includes several steps as a macroextraction characterization of the samples based on the microtomographic images and reconstruction of realistic volume meshes based on this microstructure. Then the bending test in situ using X-ray microcomputer tomography. The measurement of the kinematic displacement fields of the specimen with a digital volume correlation uh, for for using them as a boundary conditions in the test. And at final, the modeling of the fracture propagation for identification of the damage models. So the material of the study is mortar, which formulation was adapted for the institute testing. That first, the set quantity is reduced. So the following segmentation procedure can be simplified, can be more simple. And the second, the fine sand particles are removed as they will be hard to distinguish on the tomographic scans. So the specimens are micro beans with cross-section 5 to 5 millimeters and 20 millimeter lens. And the notch is approximately with the height of 1.5 milliliter. It was already today introduced what is a tomographic what is a micro microcomputer tomography technique. So I won't go into details. In basic, it's a non-destructive technique that allows us to construct the volume, volume images of the sample in a grayscale where, where the grayscale will depend on the material composition of the sample. So prior to the testing, we scan the samples in order to characterize their macro microstructure. The scans are with a low resolution and quite long, so we have get a better quality and description of details. And then we perform a segmentation procedure in the Aviso data visualization analysis software. So first we can apply some filter to filter out the noise. And then we can see that uh, we have two type of aggregates in our mortar. And our goal is to segment these inclusions from the from the matrix. The first time is the limestone inclusions, which are white, can be seen are white on the scan. And as they have a good contrast with the cement-based matrix, we can apply a simple thresholding procedure to segment them. And second type are silicious inclusions, which have not a very good contrast with the matrix, but they have a different texture. As you can see, they're more homogeneous on the scan. And as they're more homogeneous, we can apply a morphological gradient. As a homogeneous mor mor morphological gradient will be lower in the zones, so we can see them as black. And then again, we can apply a thresholding procedure to segment them from the volume. And then we can finish up with some morphological opening closing operations. So after we have segmented our inclusions, with the same software, we can reconstruct a surface meshes of our inclusions in, in addition of the notch to represent it correctly in the final mesh. Then the surface meshes are processed with tools of a free software Salome to reconstruct volume meshes based on the surface meshes. 
So after we obtain our final volume meshes, it's a, I would say it's a B phase mesh when we have matrix and two type of inclusions, porosity are not taken into account in interfaces too. We can move on to the experimental part. So this, the institute experiments are performed with a tension compression machine for institute testing and the adapted bending setup for this machine. So the sample with the bending setup are positioned vertically inside the composite material tube and between two actuators that usually apply tension or compression loading. So the actuators apply compression and as the distance between them is shortening, it will cause the sliding of the part with the support. And as the distance between those parts is shortening, it will result in the analog of a standard three point bending test. We search experimental setup and the specimen in geometry. We couldn't get a test when we have a steady crack propagation. So usually the rupture was always brittle and after crack initiates, it was propagating instantly on the whole height. So during the testing, uh, first two scans were required with a small preload, the so first scans of an intact state of a specimen. Then the specimen was continuously loaded till its rupture. And after its rupture, the next scan was acquired. After we could apply some small increment of displacement for further crack opening, and then the final scan is acquired. So the data acquired in this test are the scans in a intact and ruptured state, the rupture force, as well as can be seen, the crack is passing through the cement based matrix, through the interfaces between aggregates and the matrix, and apparently it crosses the limestone, part, limestone particles, which are brittle. After we have acquired this data, we can use a digital volume correlation technique to measure displacement fields. So this technique consists of the tracking of displacement of subset of voxel in a reference on default image and the default image. Uh, it's a global method. So the subset of voxels are actually finite elements. We use the mesh similar to the finite element meshes. And we search for the displacement field that will minimize the gap of the gray level conservation. Plus we use a mechani mechanically regularized technique. It means that we have an additional penalty, additional mechan mechanical equilibrium penalty term, which will force the elasticity of displacement locally. It will mean that it will, if we have mechanically inadmissible displacement, they will smear out over a zone defined by the regularization lens parameter, and it helps to filter out the uncertainty due, for example, for example, of tomographic artifacts and other. So with this technique, we can uh, measure the volumetric displacement and strain fields. Another additional formation that we can get with this technique is that we can measure the residual field, which is the difference between the reference scan and the deformed scan, but corrected with the displacement field. So the highest residual values will actually represent in our case a discontinuity in the displacement, which is actually the fracture, the crack. So we can visualize the fracture surface in our volume. And as we have segmented the microstructure, we can visualize it along with the inclusions to analyze how the crack is propagating uh, along with the microstructure. So the point of doing this uh, DVC technique was to measure this displacement field that we can use lately as a experimental boundary conditions. And then we can move on on the finite element simulations of fracture propagation. We use a phase field model for a brittle material uh, it's a, this is a model that based uh, on the principle of a diffuse damage zone, diffuse damage zone. So the crack is uh, uh, presented as a diffusive damage zone where the damage variable is varying continuously from the damage state to intake state, intake state over a lens which is defined by the characteristic lens parameter. And as this parameter is uh, decreasing, we are approaching to the brittle response. The model is formulated in thermodynamic framework with a split of the energy in the positive and the negative components. And the degradation of stiffness is modeled with a degradation function, which is associated solely to the positive energy. It means that we 
model the stiffness degradation in tension, and we can have the stiffness, reco stiffness recovery and compression. And overall, the fracture propagation condition is similar to the Griffith theory, where the energy release rate must be greater than the fracture energy, where the energy release rate is the maximum positive energy in the history. So in overall, this is a model with two main parameters, which is a characteristic lens that is governing the size of our damage zone and the fracture energy as a parameter that defines the resistance of our material. There was two cases of the simulation tested, because at first we have considered only the heterogeneous middle part of the beam and the boundary conditions were interpolated on the points of the side faces and on the top face of the smash. The damage model was applied to the cement paste matrix and to the limestone aggregates that were brittle as the crack was passing through them. So we fix the characteristic lens prior. We take it very small as we will assume that cement paste is mostly brittle as a mesoscopic scale. Uh, here I have, I will launch a small video of how the damage propagation is occurring in such simulations. So in overall, as here we have a very good control of the displacement, we can simulate a fracture that will be very close to what we observed in the experiment. So as we have a real mega structure and real displacement fields, but however, in such configuration, we cannot measure correctly the reaction forces. So we cannot calibrate the, the model to the experimental peak force, which is actually the goal in the study. So we move on to the second case of simulations when we will simulate the whole specimen so we construct the homogeneous part of the mesh and attach it to the heterogeneous middle. So we can simulate the whole specimen and we interpolate the boundary conditions on the points of straight lines that represent the loading point and the support. So in such configuration, we can uh, measure the reaction forces and we can calibrate the fracture energy of the cement paste according to the maximal experimental force so it's a good thing, but at the same time, mm, here we, the model fracture propagation is more deviating from the ones that we ex, uh, observe experimentally. But however, uh, we keep in mind that here we haven't introduced the decohesion of the interfacial transition zones, the interfaces between aggregates and the cement based metrics, which are very important for modern crack propagation is a mesoscopic scale. So actually the next, it will be the next step in the study after we have uh, identified the bulk damage model. So in conclusions in the study, we have performed a coupled numerical experimental approach when we have characterized the microstructure of the sample, performed institute testing, uh, measured the displacement field with the digital volume correlation and used them to perform a numerical simulation and to calibrate the bulk damage model. And in the next steps, we will introduce the decohesion on the interfaces with the cohesive zone, with the cohesive zone model and calibrate the fracture pro pro properties of the interfaces based on the fracture pass and the energy uh, and the force. And in the end, after all these properties are identified, it will be used to study the coupling of microcracking with shrinkage and creep at the mesoscale. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for attention.